Hello everyone, Neorox87 here coming back at you with uh, another special video. Um, if you've been a viewer of my channel for a long time now, these probably look familiar to you. This is my mini NFL football helmet collection. And I'm here today to do somewhat of a follow-up video because I actually have some new additions I would like to show you. And it not only that, I'm also going to give you guys a somewhat brief history of the different NFL divisions that have come and gone since these helmets were made. Um, obviously what you're seeing here is everything that you saw in my previous NFL football helmet video. Uh, i got my NFC teams over on this side and my AFC teams over on this side. And of course in the back I got my replacement helmets, or newer helmets, whatever you would like to call them. Uh, so, I had mentioned in my part one video, I guess we could call it that, uh, that there was a couple of teams that I didn't have that I would really like to get. Well, during this past off season, I am filming this video Oh, about halfway into the 2015 regular season. About a... Well, it was a... It was during the last off season. I'm not sure exactly when it was. But I did acquire some new helmets. And in fact, it's sitting right here. Now, obviously, this is the back of the package. And this is showing the teams in their respective divisions as I have them displayed over here. So, which division could it be? Well, if you saw my last video, it should really be no mystery. That's right, it's the old AFC Central. Including the Houston Oilers, also known as the Tennessee Oilers. This particular one has it packaged under the Tennessee Oilers name, uh, which is fine. They were both the Oilers in Tennessee and in Houston, so. And it also has the original Baltimore Ravens in it. And of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Cincinnati Bengals, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were all part of that division at that time. I'm glad that I had this whole package here to show you because this is actually the name of these helmets, and I failed to mention that in my first video. These are called and are called Pocket Pros. And they are made by Riddell, who makes the actual helmets and all the replicas that everybody likes to collect. But these helmets are not your your ones that you buy that are, you know, thirty, forty, fifty dollars or I think sometimes more than that. These are basically essentially toys. And you know, as you can see by this blister style packaging. You know, if you're a toy collector you pr would probably understand what I mean by blister packaging. But but they were sold by division and this is usually how they came. But this is not my only newest helmet to my collection. If you look over here, I got another one. Now this, this is nice because I'm able to show you that they also came in individual packs too. Much in the style that I bought those back over there. Um, maybe it, well, those two were, but those are a different style, and I'm going to get to that later on. So, what what helmet could this possibly be? Hmm. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why does he need two Houston slash Tennessee Oiler helmets? Well, there's a very good reason for that. Now, I'm going to show you this one here. All right, try to get a good angle on this. All right, now I'll take a look at this one. As you can see, there's a tiny little logo uh, towards the back of the helmet. And there's a good reason for that. 
I found out that, okay, we all know that the Oilers started out in Houston and they played using this helmet right here, obviously without that logo. When they moved to Tennessee in 1997, they added that logo, which is basically, I'm going to try to get a better angle on this here, which is basically their oil derrick logo and sitting on top of the Tennessee state flag. Now, obviously this is a little hard for you guys to see, so I actually found an image of this I'm going to show you guys right now. Okay, what you're seeing right here is the uh, the same logo on the helmet. And you will notice there's a little 97 logo off to the right side. That was to symbolize their inaugural season in Tennessee. And that um, in 1998, they also did the same thing, modifying it to show a number 98. I've actually seen footage from videotaped football games here on YouTube that show them in their first game, I believe it was against the New York Giants, of them wearing that logo not only on their helmet but also as a patch on their jerseys as well. So this is, these are my new helmets. So I'm going to open these up and I'm going to give you guys a brief history on how the divisions changed and where possible where the team logo was changed as well. Okay guys, here we go. Uh, I've got the helmet set up here for a little side-by-side -side comparison. I'm going to start with the Houston Oilers. Um, really, you know, not much is different than what I just showed you. Other than the Tennessee Oilers special logo on the back there. Now, one thing I didn't mention before was the, the when the logo changed with the 98 on it, you know, obviously this is too small to even tell. I really highly doubt Riddell went through the trouble of redoing this helmet with the number 97 logo off to the side. As you can see, this is hard enough to read. You know, and I'm zooming in very much right now with my camera. And that's, I mean, you can, can kind of see it, but it's it's pretty hard to see. I really don't think Riddell went through the trouble of making another helmet with 98 there when it's such a small detail. And just uh, for the record, it was only on one side. And here we are with the Baltimore Ravens helmet. So obviously, this is the one that I mentioned in my previous video, the one from uh, 1996, the one that <laughs> had the copyright issues with. And then here's the one that they ended up going with starting in 1999. Other than, than, uh, than the two logos, there is one minor difference in these, actually. If you look at the from the top angle, uh, the older helmet uses two or a double solid stripe all the way back, or at least most of the way back. Whereas the 99 logo kind of has a curving appeal to it. So that's, that's a very nice detail, I think. So that's pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna set up my helmets here and I'll give you guys a brief history lesson. Okay, here we go. Uh, you may notice a few helmets are missing. Um, that's that's normal. Uh, I just want to be clear on my little history lesson here. I'm not going all the way back to you know the early days of football in the in the late 1920s and stuff. I I'm only going back as far as I as 1994 with this. So back in 1994, we only had 28 teams. You know, we were one short in the AFC and one short in the NFC. It had been that way for actually, I think, 19 years, 19 seasons without that. You know, we added all the expansion teams in the 70s. You had the AFL-NFL merger in 1970, and you had the AFL before that. So I, I'm not going that back that far. But in 1994, this is how the league pretty much looked. All right, 
Now, the only thing to note for 1994 is the fact that the Rams played in Los Angeles, and so did the Raiders. Both of those teams moved out of Los Angeles in 1994. The Raiders went back to Oakland, and the Rams moved to St. Louis. That's the only thing to note for 1994. However, in 1995, we would be filling the voids in the AFC Central and in the NFC West over here with two new expansion teams. The Carolina Panthers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars would join the NFC or the AFC Central and the Panthers would join the NFC West. And that's... And in 1995, we had an even number of teams in each division. So, 1996 comes around. Now, I do want to, before I go on with this, I do want to apologize. I don't have all of the team colors that may have changed over the years. Like, for example, Tampa Bay, I don't have the old orange and white helmet. Or the Denver Broncos, the old light blue helmet with the letter D on it. I'm keeping this as accurate as possible where I can. But moving on. Now in 1996, I'm sure most football fans would probably remember that the Cleveland Browns relocated. In 1996, the Browns were actually deactivated. And they became the Baltimore Ravens. So, in 1997, the Houston Oilers moved to Tennessee. So, and just for, just for that, here's the Tennessee Oilers helmet. All right. They would spend 97 and 98 in in Tennessee as the Oilers. Now, also what happened in 97 slash 98 was the Jets helmet changed. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, it was right around the time when these helmets came out that their logo changed, and that is true. So they went from that helmet to this helmet. So there's 97, 98 right there. Yeah, that's not in the right place. Okay, there we go. Now comes uh, some interesting stuff in 1999. Okay, first of all, the Browns are reactivated. Now, when Baltimore left in 19, or Bal the Browns became the Ravens in 1996. All the records, team colors, logos, basically the entire history of the Browns stayed in Cleveland. So the Browns were reactivated after a three-year hiatus, and Baltimore was considered an expansion team. The only things that they retained from the Browns was, were the players and the coaching staff, front office staff, and stuff like that. So the Browns rejoined the AFC Central. It was also in 1999 that the Houston Oilers slash Tennessee Oilers, in this case, were renamed the Tennessee Titans. Okay, so now moving forward from 99 for the next few years, there would be an odd number of teams in the league. And actually, while I'm talking about these helmets, when this set was released, Riddell made the, the Pocket Pro helmet sets. They re-released all of them with one throwback helmet, with the exception of obviously the AFC Central. All of them all of them came with the same number of helmets, you know, just to make it a fair market price or, you know, whatever. Just to, just because it was the right thing to do. 
Um, AFC Central didn't come with any retro throwback helmets, but the other ones did. The AFC East came with the older version of the uh, Patriots. The AFC West came with the the older version of the Broncos, the, the letter D on it. The NFC Central came with an older version of Chicago, which was just a plain white logo instead of the orange one there. Uh, the NFC East came with the, a white version of the Dallas Cowboys. And the NFC West came with an older version of the 49ers that had a gray slash silver face mask and the logo was less detailed. So that's that. Okay, so like I said, these next few years the league would have an odd number of teams. But that would be resurrected. I shouldn't say resurrected. Be That issue would be rectified, let's put it that way, in 2002. But before we get that far, there's a few more team 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 uh, helmets that changed. Alright, in 2000 we saw two NFC teams change. First, the Giants switched from this helmet to this helmet. And then the other one that changed was St. Louis. Went from the classic dark blue and yellow to a more metallic looking helmet. Navy blue and kind of a goldish color to it. So that was in 2000. Um, I am not aware of it. Actually I need to back up here. I missed something that happened in 1999. 99, the Ravens went from that helmet to this helmet. So the Ravens now played with that helmet. I am not aware of anything that happened in 2001 as far as helmet changes are concerned. But in 2002, this is where things got really interesting. As you will recall, in 2002, a 32nd team was added to the NFL, being the Houston Texans. Now, when I first heard about this, I figured the only way they were going to make this fair was to put the Houston Texans in the NFC Central along with my Green Bay Packers. Go Pack Go. Just because the AFC Central had six teams, I couldn't see a reason why the NFC Central couldn't have six teams. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I was way wrong about that. <laughs> Which of these divisions do you think the Houston Texans went into? That's a trick question. None of these divisions. The league took the 32 teams that were now in the NFL... I'm just going to put Houston right there. And split the league. They, they kept the AFC and the NFC conferences. But they split each conference into four divisions instead of three. So this is where things are going to get really interesting. And the part I, well, I like a lot is they made it a little more geographically correct. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. Like, for example, the NFC East has the Arizona Cardinals. Now, if anybody knows their geography, Arizona is nowhere near, near the East Coast. And, ironically, the NFC West has the Carolina Panthers, and Carolina is nowhere near the West Coast. But that's just the way everything was set up back then, which is fine. So, um, I'm going to start with the AFC because this is this really saw some changes here. Alright, so we're going to add our 
fourth division here. I will start with the Houston Texans in 2002. Every division was affected in some way or form. So coming over to the NFC or the AFC South was the Indianapolis Colts. Um, the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, so now this is pretty much even, but you will notice though we have one extra team. Hmm. Well, we're gonna fix that out over on the NFC side. Now this is probably the most intriguing part about this this setup right here is actually three out of the five teams in the NFC West here became the NFC South. Those would be the Atlanta Falcons, the New Orleans Saints, Carolina Panthers, so basically the only rivalry we have left of the original NFC West is St. Louis and San Francisco here. And also joining the NFC South would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, removing them from the NFC Central Division. Now you will also notice that the NFC side is a little lopsided as well. So just to make things a little more even and a little more geographically correct, the Arizona Cardinals move from the NFC East to the NFC West. Now as I'm going to zoom out here, you will notice that we're still a little lopsided. And that would be caused by the Seattle Seahawks. Now, this is interesting. The Seahawks jump from the AFC West to the NFC West. But they never played in the NFC West with that logo, that style helmet. In 2002, they changed to this one. So now the league will still had their two conferences, the AFC and the NFC, but we also had four divisions in each conference. And as a result of this, the central divisions would be renamed the North Divisions. So now we had the AFC North and the NFC North. So that is basically how the league turned out to be moving forward from 2002 to present. So that's really about it. Um, you know, just to give you guys an idea of where we stand today, and I know I meant showed you guys these in my last video but here are the the newer versions of the pocket pro helmets these are called a revolution style helmet and i will give you guys an example of of these and it's these over here my san diego chargers helmet this is called the revolution style and if you're ever wondering how to tell them apart it's really pretty simple well, obviously you got these holes in the helmet. I'm not really sure what to really call them. I guess you can call them divots or something. But the one thing that kind of makes it obvious is this square kind of style thing where the face mask attaches to it. Versus, you know, like um, like on the old Seattle Seahawks helmet, you don't really have that. That's more. That's a much different style. So. These, and this is my Atlanta Falcons helmet of the Revolution style. So these are a more modern look. They're not bad. They're 
and you gotta keep with the changes. So as far as my my actual helmet collection is concerned, okay, I have all 32 teams and a few extras. I have at this point in time, I'm just gonna set the rest of these up here as I'm talking. I have uh, 39 helmets in my, I guess you can call them the, the, the traditional style helmet. And I know I didn't set those up very perfectly straight, but, you know, that's fine. You know, there are actually two more, take that back, there's three more helmets I want to get in this style. And that would be, um, uh, both of them are from the AFC, or the NFC South. The Atlanta Falcons, which I have right here, the Falcons helmet I want to get is this logo, but it's on this style helmet. And I know Riddell made these in the divisions as I displayed them, you know, the, the South, East, West, and North divisions after the realignment of the league. And there is a set I saw that I would like to get. It's got this, this uh, Atlanta Falcons helmet on that style. And then also the New Orleans Saints, which I'll give you an example. Their logo has changed since, I think they changed in like 2001 or 2002. That's the current logo. And that's the older version of it. So I would like to be able to get those two. And the only other one that I have, or I would want to get, would be, that I don't have an example for you, is a newer version of the Buffalo Bills helmet. The only thing that's different is... The stripes on the top of the helmet changed, I think, right around the time they re realigned the league. I think 2001 or 2002. Uh, but that's really it. Uh, if I got those three helmets, I would consider my set complete. I know there's other versions of Pocket Pro helmets. There's throwback helmets. There's the, the old school two-bar helmets. There's a lot of... There's chrome ones, there's ones in the Revolution style that are chrome, and, you know, you know, and I know, like I said, I want, I would love to have the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the, the old white and orange, but that's exclusive to a retro or a throwback set, and I'm just not into, I'm not going to get them unless I had the entire set, and those are, like, extremely hard to find and very expensive, so... I think I'll probably pass on them. But if I got those other three helmets, the Falcons, the Saints, and the Bills, I would call my set complete. As of right now, I'll, not counting those two, which I really don't need anymore because I got the Revolution helmets, um, I have uh, 39 helmets. There's 32, because there's 16 in the AFC, 16 in the NFC, and I got, let me see, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 seven extra helmets that have changed over time so there's 39 helmets so if i got the other three i'd have 41 i would call that a complete set i would be very happy you know i've been a football fan all my life born and raised a packers fan i'm gonna die a packers fan i do live in wisconsin so so this is very much much uh something i've had for a long time and will we'll cherish for years to come no, my only problem is I wish I had taken better care of them when I was a kid. Because, a good example, on my 49ers helmet, it's got a nice scratch on it. And I know some of my other helmets are a little dinged up too, but, you know, these were essentially toys and I did start collecting them when I was a kid, so. But it's something I'm going to hang on to and I'm going to, I'm going to love. I'm still a big football fan to this day, and... I think I enjoy it now more than anything because because I, I'm able to understand it more than I could when I was a kid. And one other thing before I go here is I didn't notice this until I opened the packages that actually inside on the on the cards they actually put the logo helmet logos on there too. So that's it's a nice little touch. And one other thing that I didn't mention before with the, the the Houston Oilers logo controversy, I guess you could call it. Um, I have seen 
this version of the helmet with the extra logo come in come in both versions both in the, in the division set and in the standalone packaging and with both the Houston name on it and the Tennessee name on it and in both versions too so there's ones floating around on eBay which is where I got these with this helmet coming in a Houston Oilers packaging and this is a little funny story now my individual one here does say the Tennessee Oilers and it does say Tennessee at the bottom on the barcode there and it's funny because if you look up here it says Houston Oilers so that's just something very interesting and over here somewhere there it is there's the old version of the Jets helmet too so so that is going to wrap this up um, if I ever do get the other helmets that I mentioned I, m I might do another video that that's I would say a good possibility um, Whenever that happens, you know, that'd be great. If not, you know, it's not the end of the world. But but uh, thank you for watching very much. Uh, this is Neorox87. And I will see you next time. And go Pack Go!